Hare Krishna, Radha Gopinath Prabhu. Welcome back to the Monks Podcast. It's wonderful to have you here once again. Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sparing your time. Now, I thought of today... Actually, talking... one, yes, one of the reasons why I agreed to do it is uh, your questions force me to go deeper into things which I have never thought. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I agreed. I said, let him ask some questions. So it helped me to go deeper and probably yes, understand sir. subject matter better. <laughs> no, there is much knowledge that you know, we often embody it, but we don't articulate it so much. So I feel you are an embodiment of simplicity. So I thought we could discuss today on this topic of uh, simplicity in an age of complex complexity. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I, as I said, I have some questions, but would you like to start with something specifically or how do we go ahead? How would you prefer? Well, I think that's better to guide my thoughts. Perfect. Otherwise, right now it can go anywhere. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, simplicity, I feel you can have it at three levels. One is at a physical level where we try to live as simply as possible. And that there is a lot discussed on that, how we can decrease our use of gadgets and other things. So I wouldn't, I didn't want to focus on that topic today, but simplicity, I was talking more in terms of the simplicity of heart and simplicity of purpose. So we, Saralta is talked about as a virtue in our tradition quite a bit. And at the same time, that there are some virtues which can be both misunderstood and uh, exploited. So like humility, if we misunderstand it, people may walk over us and we may let them walk over us in the name of humility. So similarly, simplicity mm-hmm. is also a virtue that can be misunderstood in terms of it might lead to naivety and a person might be, in the name of being simple, might be exploited. So we see this dynamic in uh, in Nanda Maharaj past time, Nanda Maharaj is with Vasudev. At that time, Vasudev warns him that there's likely to be some danger in a danger in uh, Vrindavan, so you go back quickly. And then Giriraj Maharaj analyzes his pastime in his book, uh, uh, Watering the Seed, where he says that Mans Prabhupada and Tamal Krishna were talking, says Giriraj is simple. So he didn't know whether it was a compliment or what was it. So then he said that he was managing the Juhu temple and it was a very complicated project. And recently his book has come about out. Uh, yeah, how... I'm re- I was reading that past time recently. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, amazing. So, you know, that's the simplicity, even in bhakti, the practice of bhakti, though we know it's a virtue, but uh, for certain services, like Vasudeva was in the political world, so he had to be, you could say, sharp and sophisticated. Nanda Maharaj was a coward man. So he didn't need that. So that dynamism in bhakti is there and different roles might require different uh, levels of simplicity or maybe sophistication or whatever is the other quality we want to talk about. So in that context, today we may not be in influential positions like say Vasudev, but still we live in complicated world and we have to deal with different kinds of people with different levels of complexity within them. So how do you think we can be simple in such a situation? (laughs) <laughs> well, you're asking a simple person a complicated question. <laughs> Maybe you could just share how you live, Prabhu, <laughs> the embodiment of simplicity. So, <laughs> uh, I think I think it also has to do with uh, a person's basic nature also. Okay. Uh, and after understanding the philosophy, some aspects naturally appeal, probably because of that nature, and that attracts the attention, and that aspect may be naturally and easily imbibed by those, and it may appeal to those who are who are probably of that nature Mm. and uh, they feel reassured to know that even that is accommodated. So I have a place (laughs) in devotion. 
otherwise i can i can i i can be depressed thinking i am not as complicated and i mean i'm not able to do all this herculean tasks <laughs> but then you see kolavech sridhar you know just living a simple life and happy and mahaprabhu drinks from his pot and says i am getting purified you feel wow even though i am not like rubu goswami <laughs> who received <laughs> so much mercy you know so suddenly you people who are a little bit simple that gives some hope <laughs> so yes. i think i think whatever naturally appeals and attracts and uh, uh it also happens to be that kind of a nature because of that they get attracted uh it 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 it, it gives reassurance and they may probably go deeper and study those incidents study the personality study the uh, purports of those and uh, feel some solace and also confidence that even this way uh, a devotional service could be done and you could be a part of a community and uh, be happily engaged <laughs> mm-hmm. so this is a striking example when you said that uh, say kolavaja shridhar is sim- was very simple and co- contrasted with rupa goswami so then here are you talking about say rupa goswami in terms of the abilities that he had the kind of responsibilities he took up the kind of books he read means can we really say that rupa goswami was not simple because he was also living in copi in a kantashir tho so at a physical level he was simple but you are you talking here in terms of having a lot of abilities and taking a lot of responsibilities in terms of contrasting wow, him with kolaj wow. shridhar <laughs> this is why i wanted uh, i wanted uh, to uh, i agreed to hear you because you would force me to you know kind of think deeper on that line okay uh for example say ramanand rai or mm-hmm. uh, raghunath das goswami mm-hmm. who will say that they were not simple their whole uh, you know dealings with mahaprabhu was straight forward and very simple and pure mm-hmm. but because they had this background and these they had this particular nature and that particular type of service which uh, they really knew how to deal with it whether it is vasudev whether it is ramanand roy and he used ramanand roy used the same thing to facilitate lord chaitanya giving his mercy to uh, maharaj pratap rudra no no one else could have done it probably as efficiently and as effectively you know how did ramanand so, rai help sorry how did ramanand rai help pratap rudra to get mercy it's more of sarvam bhattacharya he he you know he he praised a king in front of lord chaitanya saying that my lord you had asked me to join you and resign so when i went and put up put up my papers oh, so okay. to say maharaj pratap rudra he was so happy that what i could not receive you are receiving and he gave me a full stipend for the whole um, uh, full payment for the whole lifetime as long as you and gave me full blessed permission and by hearing your name uh, his eyes were uh, uh, having tears and he embraced me which means he had no envy mm. just propad mentions that he had no envy to his subordinate receiving more mercy than him and rather he could have stopped but he facilitated it whole heartedly and he said you please pray that one day even i may you beautiful uh, the same ramanand rai or even Ra- raghunath das goswami you know used it to actually come closer to and or to surrender to the mission of lord chaitanya so yeah maybe it is a particular type of a disposition of mind and ability some skill set some you know 
gifts and uh, it is doubted uh, how how vasudev used it uh, in krishna's interest to protect krishna you know uh, so so coming back to your question whether uh, rupa goswami was simple at heart or not 100% <coughs> because one quality of a devotee is his simplicity mm. the greatest truths are very simple but it is our mind influenced by the false ego which complicates the whole matter mm. you know so when dealing with the lord it is straight forward is very clear but the tremendous gift they have been given they use it to present to the world which asks all kind of complicated questions so jeev goswami answers so somebody may ask this question if you see all the sandarbhas all just like lord krishna designed 84 lakh species taking into consideration all 84 lakh different type of desires from krishna pleasing mm-hmm. krishna so these powerful personalities knowing the different type of evolution of consciousness and the complication of the ego typical what all uh, questions may come uh, they have answered that they have dealt with it you know but that doesn't mean that because of those things they were not simple in their lifestyle in their dealings in their interactions it was so straight forward actually in simplicity prabhupad translates as uh, also in uh, i think in the gita two places in the 13th chapter and also in the 16th chapter divine qualities and uh, characteristics of knowledge chapter the items of knowledge yeah, yeah. there he talks about uh, arjavam as simplicity and being straight forward okay straight forward so if straight forward works they are straight forward but they follow krishna ye yathamam prapadyante okay with, with, with sudama he was so simple and straight forward with kolavacha he was straight forward with devotees he straight forward but when people try to manipulate then krishna is reciprocates in the same way he has a last laugh ultimately like <laughs> vaman dev <laughs> yeah Yeah. So now, if I understand right, what we are talking about is, see, there is one is simplicity of heart or purpose, which can you can put it more together, and second we could call it simplicity of service. So the service might be complicated, which a person might do, but and for the complicated survey, so when you talk about innate disposition, which a person might have, so some people might not have that disposition for. doing a complicated service so it could by disposition you could either refer to nature or we could refer to ability we could refer to training whatever so they don't have that so kolavacha shridhar would fall in that area where his service was not complicated whereas sajiv goswami or ramanand rai their service was quite challenging and complicated at least jiv goswami is answering philosophical questions or we could say ramanand rai was early administering a kingdom so they were complicated services so can we differentiate between these two things simplicity of heart and simplicity of uh, say engagement or service and then beyond i mean related with the second would be the third like say simplicity of living we have the example of uh, pondrik vidyanidhi who was living quite opulently but still he was devoted so the simplicity of service and simplicity of living may be related because sometimes for a for a important service one may need a particular way of living like yudhishthir maharaj lived in opulence because he was a king yeah. so but that doesn't mean the pandavas were not or they were not simple i'm i'm on the uh, right? yeah yeah i think that's very simple <laughs> so whatever the service requires do the needful <laughs> and and also i see if a person is such like giriraj maharaj 
you know when uh, mr nayar try to deal with him and he giridas maharaj i am reading that book right now you know so giridas maharaj says i didn't understand was he friendly to us was he inimical to us was he exploiting us i had no understanding because he was presenting different facets so that is the time when uh, prabhupad called uh, karandar he called uh, um tamal krishnam to three people he called and one day he sent back he said no you are not needed you can go back to kolkata uh, but these two can stay here and eventually tamal krishnam maharaj and sham sundar prabhu worked out and they thought that in fact they went a little extra <laughs> they said this project is not worth it so they actually cancelled the yeah and prabhupada was really angry they thought that you know prabhupada was a little old and he was becoming a little stubborn you know that nahi i want to this land and that's why they said no better to cancel this is really not worth it's too far away rat infested place so so somewhere that <laughs> over smartness calls a little extra for that but but he was they were able to detect that no this person is trying to play around so in that context mahara prabhupada said that now giriraj is very simple but very sincere and giriraj maharaj writes there uh, i knew i am not into this management kind of a thing but because it has been given to me i will do my best if still prabhupada wants me to be here he knows best if there is a better person he would probably send mm. you know and so he continued on and did all these apparently complicated things of different type of uh services especially different types of people handling different type of people especially he speaks about narnara and prabhu <laughs> so he said it is very tough for me at the same time so many other kind of things were coming up which was never the case you were not chant and dance and preach and do worship this was very simple but this was becoming very complicated but he was trying to do his best and still prabhupad trusted him and wanted him there so probably the authorities know better many a times the authorities can clearly see what is the capacity of this person and uh, may engage but still in spite of knowing the capacity still if they engage that means probably that the need of the hour you know the best possible thing so we do it nevertheless and probably whatever is necessary krishna will give the good intelligence and the strength yes <laughs> so it is it's a good i mean what you said is simplest is biggest point simplicity means simply do the service that we are asked to do and sometimes we may have certain abilities or the the disposition for doing that service sometimes we may not have but still we continue now going back in mr n is uh, nair he was basically we could say the opposite of simplicity is duplicity mm-hmm. and uh, yeah yeah now duplicity is something which is not so easy to detect and you, so at the same time while dealing with duplicity is people like krishna also does that shatho shatyam so now when we live in a duplicitous world or at least we interact with people who may be duplicitous we don't want to assume that but sometimes some people are so there is a certain amount of uh, we could say diplomacy that is required so if you can have a pendulum like that simplicity is <coughs> simplicity is one extreme we could say not necessarily extreme in an undesirable sense but just with respect to dealing with the situations one extreme is simplicity the other extreme is duplicity so if a person is it's too simple and they are meeting the duplicitous person they might be taken for the simple person might be taken for a ride so for functioning in the world we could say in the middle is something like diplomacy so like sanatan goswami when he was for no reason arrested by nawab hussein shah and put in jail now he realized that if he has to get out he has to have some strategy and then he he didn't say that i am going to varanasi to see lord chaitanya he said i am going to mecca uh, and that's how I mean that was not enough. Then he offered some 
some money to the jailer, and the jailer allowed him to go. So then again, for the service of the Lord, if a devotee needs to be diplomatic, a div- so simplicity is a virtue. But again, simplicity is all virtues we can say are are ultimately meant to help us serve the Lord. So if simplicity doesn't help us to serve the Lord, then a certain amount of diplomacy may also be adopted as necessary for the service of the Lord. What, what do you think about this, please? Uh, when uh, Vidura uh, in one sense cheats Sanjaya and leaves along with uh, Dhritarashtra and Gandhari, Prabhupada writes an amazing statement. <laughs> great men cheat for a great cause. Mm. So unless you are a great man and your cause is great, better be straightforward. Uh, in this regard, one time uh, Adi Kesho Prabhu, our God brother, asked uh, Radhanath Swami Maharaj a question, very nice question. <clears throat> he said, uh, we hear of such powerful you know, book distributors in the past, uh, but many of them we hardly you know, hear afterwards. Mm. Or not you know, visible in the scene right now so much. So he was asking, uh, how do you understand? Because book distribution is such a transcendental you know, devotional service. Mm. So how do we understand that? So Maharaj uh, Radhana Swami made a statement. He said, devotional service is transcendental, but we are not. Mm. And he was expressing how uh, the devotees would go out and start because Prabhupada had made one statement by hook or crook, sell my book. (laughs) So they had just taken one, that particular statement Mm. and would do uh, apparently a lie to somehow push the book say anything, do anything, or, you know, get anything done to get the book done. And it was good. Okay, they were protected because their cause was apparently spiritual, and therefore, you know, probably that's why Krishna protected them, whatever it is. But they saw that by doing it, they were very quickly able to get what they wanted. So that got into them. Then when they came to the temple... And when they wanted to get things done quickly, they started using the same technique with the devotees. It became their second nature. That caused confusion, that caused so much of loss of faith. And eventually, uh, one of the factors, may not be the main factor, but one of the factors. So, yes, Essentially, devotees' heart is saralata. But if, the like, like Chanakya says, if the fellow in front is like that, then you will have to, you know, Bolena, Siri Ungli say, Ghee nahi nikalti, Maharaj. Tedi Ungli, you have to, if you want to take out Ghee, you have to bend your finger. So, mm. so like that, uh, if, see, actually, a devotee from within is very simple and straightforward. Mm. That's the nature of devotional service. Devotional service is very pure, straightforward and clear. The dynamics are very clear. But if they are gifted with a particular disposition, skill sets, naturally, because of some, whatever, their past karma or whatever, they can use it. When faced with this complicated nature of this world, externally, while remaining simple internally. Mm. You know, so Prabhupada, do you think Prabhupada was not simple? He was the height of simplicity. He was so straightforward when preaching. He was so straightforward many times. 
but with mr n he was very uh, like when they went when uh, n came along with a yogi or a guru mm. to hyderabad <laughs> to meet tawal krishna maharaj so uh, they had a good lunch in one uh, the person's house big uh, um, rich man's house the place where they were staying and then after that prabhupad yawned and he said i think it was a very good lunch we should take rest and immediately that yogi said yeah 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 swami ji looks like you are very tired you should take rest and they went and both of them took rest and prabhupad came inside and told tamal krishna maharaj he said when a person says you must so they must be sleeping now you wake nayar and bring me <laughs> bring it and they dealt with the whole thing wrote down everything so now prabhupad when he saw that the person in front is like faced with kamsa do you think vasudev was so simple at heart simplicity is the nature of devotion service but he saw that with this guy i can't do it now there are some people who may be too naive very simple at heart and by nature also so they many a times it's amazing many a times i have seen devotees who are apparently so simple but because they know scripture and because they are uh alert they know that this person is probably cheating and all that but they could still be the the way they are you know oh, okay. and understand and appreciate and and probably have, uh, understand that this person is trying to cheat and they do whatever their best <laughs> they may so not be able to deal with it effectively but uh, they will be able to understand you know okay hey, this is because they see through the eye of scriptures mm. i can't trust this person of course sometimes in the smartest people i have seen being fooled on the on a spot of the moment because they are not alert mm. i'm talking about just in small incidents but as a as a as a particular service important service of doing some kind of you know elite preaching you have those who have that kind of a skill set are better equipped mm. disposition are better equipped because for them it is born and raised in a particular situation where they have been dealing with those kind of things It's easy for them also krishna may empower them at that time because of the service of their for their sincerity if they really want to krishna may empower what's difficult for him this is my at least is my feeling <laughs> yeah for I... just like as somebody said some are born leaders some are made leaders some are pushed into leadership oh okay right so similarly some are born diplomats some are made diplomats after training some are circumstantially pushed into such a situation they try to do their best <laughs> okay so you are saying that even if somebody is naive and because they are devoted so krishna probably the dami buddhi yogam some will give some them some kind of sense so yeah. and they may also still be protected but still in a broader and sense and many a times and many a times many a times by maintaining their simplicity many a times it ha- they have transformed the other person and many a time they have been cheated also <laughs> okay let's do some that simplicity has many a times transformed the person in front while if they are hardcore and very focused <laughs> then they could take advantage of it and that has also happened i have seen that yeah that also happened but so, you can't do it with a, a seasoned devotee who is like a strong diplomat like yeah. raghunath das goswami shri prabhupad so in a sense if somebody is taking up responsible services then a particular set of 
abilities is suited so you know, there is there is like say sincerity and then there is ability or competence we could say so uh, lack of competence the two are separate things and the two may not be uh, replaceable they may not be interchangeable so of course we can say sincerity is more important than ability or so are we more or less equa equating sincerity and simple simplicity over here in terms of the essential import in one sense yes because sincerity means transparency in terms of what is inside is straightforward okay you know mm. being being yeah if we take in that respect i think who was that somebody told me the word sincere comes from uh, uh, sincere i think sachinandan maharaj mentions it sachinandan maharaj right could you, yes. you remember what exactly he told that some cracks in the marble or something they were yeah i'm just thinking something he had told transparent or you know something like that something to that effect i don't remember right now so in that sense uh, you know sincerity is what is within is without in that sense straight forward yeah so so okay that could be a quality of a devotee okay that's an age because out of the 26 qualities even one of them however each one has just like there is a brahmana vaishnav there is kshatriya vaishnav a vaishya shudra brahmachari whatever you know like bhakti sadan sri thakur endless 10 kinds of brahmanas with scriptural quotes oh okay 10 kinds Any of levels brahmanas would mean so are you saying they are all having different levels of simplicity or something like that uh in terms of uh different gradations he makes you know like the uh, when we say brahmanas were leaders of society in terms of guiding the kings not all can guide some are very simple people but brahminical some are highly intellectual probably like chanakya or you know all this uh uh powerful brahmanas who are also you know advisors to the king very pure hearted brahminical nature people who are guides so even there there are different levels just because i have a you know i am a brahmana that doesn't mean that all of them have the same uh, skill set but one aspect of brahmanical shamodama tapas shaucham shantir arjavam that arjavam should be there but the same arjavam but if he is a gifted person he is able to detect personally chanakya his lifestyle is living everything was simple but he was able to detect what the enemy could think 10 times you know, like like a chess playing chess 10 steps ahead he could think and you know chart out a plan and guide the king for a purpose very focused purpose so i'm just thinking aloud along with you <laughs> yeah i think this is quite a discovery you know in some ways <laughs> so this that means uh, you when you talk about these different kinds of brahmanas also so we could say even in our in the today's world we see that not just in the devotee community in the outside world also we see there are people who are in the mode of goodness there are intellectuals who might be reflective about deeper things and they also are they also spread over a spectrum so basically uh, bhakti we could say it means that we whatever we have we use in krishna service and so going back to that point of sincerity and ability in we equate at least temporarily we equate sincerity and simplicity so if somebody has a particular responsible service then it is better if they have the ability to do that service also then that can be done more effectively and those who may not have that ability then sometimes they may be thrust in that situation where they have to do that service and then they do it but in general if we consider varanashram it also mean that 
there is there is engagement according to one's uh, one's ability guna karma vibhagasha so that would apply also to apply also to uh, the, this kind of engagements also isn't it just like water finds its own level hmm similarly similarly every individual if given a facility and if given proper respect and the choice and security would naturally would like to do what he likes to do but today everyone is trying to do something else because some some kind of services have no respect they have no security therefore forced to or out of pressure for the society what will society think about this service probably everyone is running for one particular type of a thing but otherwise if given that space if given that uh, assurance that whatever you do is appreciated recognized and respected which is true varnashram so naturally they would go to do that Hmm. Well, but still, why paradharma they do? Because this particular service, what they are inclined to, has probably no recognition, no appreciation, no security. That cannot give security, and therefore everyone looks for something else. But yes. in true Varnashram, there was, there was this. You know, their contribution was acknowledged. They were respected for what they were. what they are who they are and what they were doing to the society and they had uh, they you know uh, service was not only appreciated but rewarded in such a way that they were able to maintain themselves okay therefore the best art came up during the kings time if you see during the time of these great kings the art and architecture they became up because they were given that facility you don't worry about your family you don't worry about their security we will provide you just build this so they focused their whatever their quality and perfected it practically mm. so therefore everything evolved and there was this security appreciation and respect yes so in today's world if we see uh because they we have a institution to run at one level and institution to some extent requires uh, some tangible goal some amount of quantification so then that creates a a functional hierarchy that in terms of quantified goals who can who can meet those goals more who can't meet those goals that much say in terms of book distribution who can distribute how many books who can this who may not distribute that many books now from at one level this is good because people are being engaged people are being inspired but i think the challenge would come when uh, when what is like a functional necessity becomes almost a person's defining identity <coughs> this their self worth there is they feel that their self worth is determined by how many books they can distribute then that's the what will lead, you feel it will lead to insecurity if i can't do it or i have to somehow push myself to do it so this is like bhakti sanat thakur said that it is a necessary evil institution at one level so if a particular sir, a devotee is good at a particular service but that is not so much valued hmm? then what what would you recommend for such a person to do because i i did not hear that part bhakti sanat sir thakur and it got oh sorry off. so bhakti sanat thakur said that that institution is a necessary evil at one level yeah and so sometimes quantification is necessary for a functional purpose in an institution hmm? Hmm. but the problem comes when what is a functional necessity becomes a personal identity or it becomes a source of one self worth if somebody does this much hmm. they are of this much value if they can't do this much is not so much value so <coughs> both individually 
if a devotee in such a situation you know what do you think they can do to be able to deal with this when they are doing some service which is not being valued or appreciated is there something that they can do to change the ethos or is something they can do to adapt themselves uh actually in the uh, devotee care uh, seminar mm. uh, there are 21 reasons for lack of devotee care and one of them is a uh, short sightedness uh on part of the leadership in terms of immediate benefit rather than the long term sustainability mm. uh so uh naturally uh the the resources situational you know situation where you are forced to kind of do that so if it's an emergency it's one thing but if that emergency becomes a permanent thing you know mm. then par dharmo bhayavah it creates havoc it creates so much of unnecessary competition and you know vying for each other for that position and so so it's so much necessary that uh, uh this kind of uh, training be given to identify and engage to identify a particular person's uh, inclinations where they are where they can be happily serving and for a long time happily serving and you you are happy when you are serving according to your nature you know you are you are naturally inclined to a particular thing and and the proof of that is you don't feel tired in fact physically you feel exhausted but internally you are enthused then you know that this is where you actually you know in the long term i'm not talking about you know what is liking in terms of superficial level of mm. activities but a foundational sustainable in the long term you know so when that uh, is facilitated by proper observation by giving the space helping them also to identify and uh, uh some kind of a training uh, then wherever you are you are actually you know like contributing also the best and you are not feeling uh it's an effort because it's a very natural thing for you mm. in your in your in your elements place would be burnt out but not of that person because that's what is that's his sense gratification basically <laughs> <laughs> so you got a dharmic sense gratification or you could say they are satisfying krishna senses and they are satisfying yeah. their own senses also within that scope yeah sense satisfaction not sense gratification <laughs> oh yeah sense satisfaction yes that's true so So this is a very important point for you that uh, many ways because we are in a fun- we are in a society where we have targets and goals comparison is unavoidable but when that comparison becomes like a default mentality or if a person starts feeling insecure because of that then then it is damaging i think it has become worse in the age of social media now because even when devotees say Uh, make a video or do something often we call, rate a video based on how many views they are having which is one way of looking at it so at one level if a devotee's videos get a lot of views and a devotee is uh, are able to reach a lot of people that's wonderful but that alone is not shouldn't become the rating of a person's uh, thinking of how much my my preaching is of value or how much even my existence is of value so then it becomes a then it, it leads to a lot of insecurity so you are saying that if there is the environment created by the leader of the institution then such devotees will not get then devotees won't get such feelings of insecurity 
is that what you are yeah yeah yes 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 because um uh, you know these things are uh, very superficial assessment you know of uh, a person's uh, uh contribution you can manipulate that or you try to speak you know, that's one thing but then uh the substance of what a devotee is made up of you know if you if you see prabhupad you know he encouraged every person at all level some simple kind of a homemaker you know a lady at home taking care of children to somebody who is running a whole uh, project or a practically leading leading the whole country he may have given more time and guidance okay but to him he valued everyone no like prabhupad told tamal krishna maharaj there is a statement he made when he said just like you know like lord ram was treating hanuman and the squirrel with equal he quotes that he said you should, as a leader you should make sure that in your uh, jurisdiction who is there everyone should be uh, engaged according to their nature and appreciated also feel appreciated he mm. told this something like this to even giriraj maharaj say nar narayan is very energetic you engage him in that gardening you know and give him all the facility only when it became a little intense of other issues then he was asked to go back to the us otherwise say no no you have to tolerate and you have to take everyone together mm-hmm. so uh, interestingly today is uh, pushabhishek and uh, his own as radhanath maharaj any time we do this flower petals plucking uh, this is so hope giving you know in his talks he always mentions that here are industrialists here are simple villagers there are drivers and there are simple housewives and everyone everyone is doing something plucking petals from the flowers that anyone can do satram pushpam balam toyam <laughs> so krishna uh he sees the result so it is difficult in this day and age when you know things are so much in a, in, a, in a demand to perform or perish uh, mm-hmm. but it requires uh that we have to create a environment probably i i am as personal example of that in any other environment probably i would i wouldn't have stayed <laughs> i have i've survived because i was accepted for what i was and tolerated for what i was and uh, patiently they gave me that space to just be what i am and do whatever whatever i can <laughs> and that was appreciated whatever you are doing so, is not small otherwise probably i don't know <laughs> no whatever you are doing is by no means small you are especially your journey of self discovery course it's uh, it's not just attracted thousands of people <laughs> in mumbai but all over the world it is a invaluable resource so but you know what i appreciate your point now i talk with several devotees like senior prabhupada disciples who were in the early time brahmacharis and then they left and they many of them become academic scholars so what they told me is that they saw no growth prospect for themselves within the ashram so in a uh, sense they wanted to do more service for krishna but there was no scope for them so then they felt that whatever abilities i have i can i can contribute more or better elsewhere so actually if somebody is given space then 
as they discover their ability in the long run they might be able to do some service which some service which is far bigger than what we might be engaging them in right now so in that sense it's not even a it's not yeah, a loss yeah. what you earlier said about short sightedness in terms of looking at immediates yeah yeah so also it may be in a kind of an ashram setup uh it was nicely put by one devotee in an ashram setup especially in a temple brahmachari ashram setup he said uh, there are some things you like to do there are some things you have to do and there are some things you are asked to do what you like to do inspires you what you have to do purifies you and what you are asked to do is a way of expressing our gratitude for the uh for staying in the place so it should be balanced it should be balanced mm -hmm. you know uh so then uh, there is win win true win win you know to the to the to the community you are providing and uh, the community is also providing for your that space yeah you know so that balance needs to be there amongst these three yeah what you yeah. have to do what you have to do is like your basic sadhana visibility expected to stay in the community and what you are asked to do is the need of the temple or need of a community at a particular time then you have to drop sarva dharman parityaja but it's an emergency okay that's the need of the hour very good and then what you like to do is something that if there is a time naturally my heart goes there mm. i can go on doing it for hours and not feel tired so that kind of needs to be balanced that's what i feel yes and even for uh, so for devotees who are not necessarily in the ashram setting if they find a service which they also like to do then that becomes something which they can keep doing throughout their life otherwise you know somebody has to tell them have you done the service have you completed it so in a sense a some amount of as you said inspiration naturally comes if it's in harmony with our nature so yeah and now with our movement becoming very at one level quite large so to some extent often it's the the onus falls on the individual to find out you know what is it that i can do the devamrit maharaj in one of lectures says is that you, know, you should you should take your responsibility for your spiritual life if you are in a career you would think how you would grow in your career so you should think not how you grow but how you can contribute more how you can become a better and better instrument for guru and krishna so i felt that in that yeah. sense at one level obeying instructions is that yeah what we have to do or asked to do but taking responsibility to find out what we like to do what we are good at yeah. that is also an important part of bhakti because sometimes <clears throat> just emphasizing following instructions it's important but that may deter people from devotee from taking initiative and then what they can act, they can contribute that may be overlooked yeah i i can relate this uh where there isn't a highly well knit community of people who are there for each other and supporting and cultivating everyone so naturally at such a place uh, everyone has to fend for themselves mm -hmm. but if there is a family atmosphere if there is a community with a uh, strong leadership where uh, in the beginning we give and in the long run they reciprocate uh, it is it is it is it is not it's not uh, what you are asked to do meaning may be told but eventually you understand that's the need 
that's the need just like in a, in a, in a, in, a, in india basically at now that is also disappearing but parents do their best to the kids and after some time they understand the children understand that now they are grown old they their needs it's time for me to now reciprocate mm. that's the need of the family right now so like in a community also now the community help me grow now the next level what i have received now time to give back now so that comes automatically in a responsible uh person who has received so much for what he is today or what they are today mm. you see that should come naturally not artificially uh, but the, if the same thing is imposed upon someone who hasn't received anything so naturally he will feel why should i do i haven't received anything who is this person to order me mm. so, so and, and i like this one particular sorry i i like this one particular aspect of the vedic culture you know i mean now vedic culture means it may <laughs> too many things for too too many people but i'll just say in the scriptures when it, when it talks about all this varnashram and many other things two examples i'll give because when you emphasize one it becomes topsy turvy like for example everyone is told give charity to the brahmanas give charity to the brahmanas 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 while the brahmanas are told that even one pi of that charity if you use it for your unnecessary unwanted sense gratification because these people are told that if you don't give to the charity to the brahmanas you will go to hell and the brahmanas are told if you take unwanted sense gratification then you will go to darker hell the whole society is told respect uh, atithi devo bhava respect uh, guests you know but the guests are told don't take undue advantage of the uh, mm. uh, hospitality just like arjuna was asked when yudhishthir comes uh, you know vidish sees him did you stay long in uh, yeah you know dwarka and did they disrespect you so there is a balance while the leaders are told that do the best you can give them that facility give them that protection give them that security give them that appreciation others are told not to ask for it tolerate whatever is the situation be grateful for whatever comes mm. at least some society is there so each, if if each starts claiming what they are expecting there are rights and there are duties each one should focus on their duty rather than demanding their rights the right is to be considered by the others and the duty should be considered by ourselves today it's happened the other way around we are reminding everyone of our rights and others are reminding of our duties <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so you know if everybody is concerned about their duties then they will protect each other's rights but uh, yeah it, it becomes a problem yeah in so fact, it's of course easy to say but very difficult to put back but that's the that's what that's what makes it so sweet the exchange is so sweet and loving true yes so it's a uh, like i think chetan mahapuru says that chetan chandra says that first level servant is one who understands the mind and addresses the need so we could say that yeah. that can apply in various relationships also that if there is as you said if there is a need do it without asking so that's my duty and for the other person or they have a need we provide it even without necessarily they needing to ask us about it yeah you know you have been now in the movement for almost 40 years so have you seen a evolution in the ethos because say in the early years 1960 1970s we didn't have that much uh, people itself so everybody had to do what was necessary 
but do you see a evolution of like you said you give your own example but apart from your example here but in other place other places also in our movement wherever you have traveled and observed how do you see this right now yeah no see there is one thing is what the ideal expectations are and uh, truly it takes a lot to create that kind of an environment mm. and uh, it's not easy it's not easy that's true and uh, therefore um it's like you know uh, water flowing downstream the nature is to go down the whole system goes down mm. even to maintain it at its level the kind of energy the kind of sacrifice the kind of um extending oneself all that is necessary is not possible for everyone not possible for everyone uh, and so therefore uh, at least the uh, it must be understood and uh, encouraged and uh, but i'm and i'm i'm seeing without a very uh, strong inspiring and uh, sustained leadership is very difficult to uh, do that very difficult to do that and so you in one sense you are right what you are saying is true that um that needs to be at least educated and as far as possible you know try to be created that kind of a situation to be created otherwise already i, I can see that things can go down if it is not uh maintained and it's not easy I was just thinking, Prabhupada single-handedly maintained. Later, he had his whole GBC, who was still finding it difficult to even maintain what was created. Hmm. Uh, it's easily said than done, but the principles remain the same. So, as close to the ideal that we can create, that we need to, you know. Okay. try to create here yeah. this is how i understand this is how i see yes so i think every project based on their particular situation will have a particular priority and i think that is as you said depends on the mood of the leader and other things and overall devotees also at an individual level it seems they gravitate toward a some place where they get nourishment nowadays especially with the internet connecting the world so much that can of course lead to distraction and other things but i can also even if one doesn't get nourishment where one is physically one can seek nourishment elsewhere also in that sense the channels also have opened up more so so we we could say that you know simplicity is a virtue but preserving simplicity is not simple <laughs> or preserving a env- environment where people can have people can live simply is not necessarily simple it requires effort <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> yeah so let's make a couple of questions toward the end now when when we talk about simplicity in say in an environment like today's so should a devotee so i should consciously tr- strive to cultivate simplicity or is focus on doing service and then simplicity will naturally develop from that like we say asyasti bhaktir bhagavat ya kinchana that one who is who is devoted all virtues come up so should a devotee try to develop the virtue or we should just try to try to serve try to do service this question was asked to me uh which comes first <laughs> you know devotion comes first or the qualities come first or we should develop the qualities and then devotion 
so uh, somehow that inspiration came to me i had a they had put a big garland on me of flowers hmm so i picked up the garland and i showed them i asked them which is important the flowers or the thread <laughs> the thread was not visible okay but the flowers were held by that so i asked everyone which is important please tell me so if you say thread then next time i will put only the thread on your neck not the <laughs> flower garland hmm. and if you say flowers i'll give you flowers you try to put it into a neck put it into a garland so the point is first you have to probably in the beginning gather these flowers which are qualities as far as possible try to gather them but if you want to hold them then you need to only devotional service can hold them you know otherwise manorathena sati dhavato bhai devotion is a thread which holds all these qualities and takes these qualities to its ultimate purpose for what that quality is meant for hmm to please krishna to come closer to krishna to love krishna to serve krishna otherwise what is the use of simplicity you can be proud of your simplicity hmm and make your life complex <laughs> <laughs> proud of such a memorable thought because we are proud of everything so we go proud of our simplicity and that pride makes our life complex that's uh, insightful <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> also i mean, just i like this metaphor very much of a garland that something similar sutra mani gana even the bhagavad gita also that yeah, yeah you know we cannot really appreciate krishna immediately so we look at the beautiful manifestations in the world and then we think what is sustaining it what is holding it together so then that's how we think of krishna i think prabhupada also says that all knowledge comes from krishna but all knowledge doesn't begin from krishna mm-hmm. <laughs> our knowledge begins from the things in this world so and then we move towards krishna so something similar i would say that you know, not everybody can have devotion immediately and and the world also cannot appreciate devotion immediately so when there are virtues good qualities that's what is visible that's what is attractive and then the underlying devotion will be appreciated so in that sense uh, we devotion is like the invisible thread and uh, it's vital without it nothing can be sustained but now for it to like for the garland to be offered the thread is re- it's the thread alone is not enough the flowers also have to be there so both are required and uh, i think krishna also in the 12th chapter when he talks about qualities he talks about those who are the devotees who are dear to him he essentially talks about devotees with virtues those devotees who don't disturb yeah. others who are not disturbed by others such devotees are dear to me so in that sense krishna yeah. doesn't separate yeah. you know the virtues from devotees in fact virtuous devotion is pleasing to krishna yes so yeah yeah Makes sense mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and when we talk about uh, say simplicity as opposed to duplicity now duplicity in the case of kamsa would be something which is like, like in demons it's very easy to understand but in our case say how would we differentiate between duplicity and and diplomacy like you earlier said unless you are a great soul or working for a great cause better be straight forward so that is a that is a very valid principle but there are situations when one may need to be diplomatic so is there some guidelines about whether one is being uh, diplomatic or duplicitous uh, how can one differentiate <clears throat> there is one beautiful verse in the gita 5.7 yoga yukto vishuddha atma vichitra atma jitendriya sarva bhutatma bhutatma kurvan api na lipyate yes so there he there propad makes a very interesting point because a person in krishna consciousness is a servant of all hmm everyone is satisfied with him because everyone is satisfied with him his consciousness is pure 
because his consciousness is pure his mind is at peace because his mind is peaceful his senses are controlled and because his senses are controlled he can never be offensive to anyone so if to serve the opposite person if the best way is to become diplomatic i will try to be diplomatic i will tell a white lie if need be that's not a lie because for the absolute truth if i am telling a lie it's a part of that is the whole thing mm. part of that package deal so that is understandable that's understandable but when it is for my interest that i twist the truth or or play around then it is hypocrisy because you are trying to say that you are a servant you are a well-wisher but it is like putna putna came as a brahmani wanting to bless and you know uh, give uh, affection to the child but actually her interest was to kill and for her own purpose drink the blood asivat that's why shudra goswami uses that word it's like a sword in a very nice case so that is duplicity but sometimes prabhupad did something for that person's benefit long term sustain you know long term benefit so he was trying to serve the best way he could serve in a way that krishna is pleased not to please the other person not to please me but it is to please krishna if this is the best way i can please krishna i will do krishna told you this day tell a lie you know if that's what it takes to establish dharma whether it is bhima whether it is, uh, pandavas broke the rules kauravas also broke the rules kauravas followed the rules when it was benefiting them they broke the rules when it was benefiting them but pandavas followed the rules for pleasure of krishna and broke the rules for the pleasure of krishna hmm so 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 it's not about being duplicitous but for whose sake for whose satisfaction on whose order hmm you know if that is done then that duplicity is glorious it's like losing a battle to win the war so that is oh i never thought of a metaphor like this over here <coughs> so in terms of ethical behavior you could say that some 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 behavior may be considered unethical so that's like losing a battle but the ultimate yeah. purpose of all ethical behavior is to ultimately say, the take the person connect the person with krishna or take them closer to krishna yeah. that is krishna's cause that is the war <laughs> that's quite uh, i never thought of that that's <laughs> actually in the book uh, stand uh, you know btg founder the early btg uh, yeah. magazine was put in a big thick form founder hmm. right so the magazine given so in that prabhupad has written a article called standard morality okay standard morality and there he begins the essay by telling morality is the standard of activity by which the supreme authority is satisfied oh So morality not to be undermined you know? at all. That means, so, yeah, morality is the standard of activity by which the supreme authority is satisfied. So, for the sake of absolute truth, if you have to tell a lie, that's not a lie. That lie is a part of the absolute truth. Oh, you know? okay. But even if you are telling the truth, but if it is a part of a big lie, then even the truth is a lie. And it's like honesty among thieves. I mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. Hmm. <coughs> yes, yes. I think this is a very, uh, I think very conclusive note to conclude. I would say that in the sense, that <laughs> ultimately, everything is for the pleasure of the Lord, for the service of the Lord. Yeah. So, should I try to summarize through, and then you can speak some concluding words if you like? Just I okay okay. Yeah, you no, no, I just tell in this regard. Yeah, please. That. the our greatest acharyas were even in their most apparently complicated and duplicitous behavior 
they were very simple and straight forward they did whatever it was necessary to please krishna that was a simple program just to please krishna <laughs> <laughs> so if that is the standard then from that perspective simplicity is not complicated absolutely so, yes. yeah very simple to please krishna i'll do whatever is necessary mm. i think the complex thing complex thing might be to know what will please krishna in a particular situation <laughs> <laughs> so arjuna when he had to decide what to do with ashwatthama he wanted to please krishna but he had to think what do i do in this situation so he had to choose different options but yeah that's true krishna gives dadami buddhi yogam tam mm-hmm. say so even prabhupad when i think in london it happened we had to get the dts prabhupad avoided all the complications yeah, they just yeah. took the dts they would say he just he abducted krishna ladadishwar but that was for krishna's pleasure mm. yes fine so i'll try to summarize with you then if you have any further comment like we can add So we talked about the topic of simplicity, and then I talked about, say, the Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev example. So you said that first there is an innate nature, and some people will naturally be simple, and they feel reassured that there is space for them also, like say Kolavija Shridhar's example. And then we talked about Rupa Goswami was he not simple, but you could say his service was service was complicated. He was always simple in the heart. but if they are taking up complex services then at that time uh, having the corresponding abilities is helpful now if somebody doesn't have those abilities like say giriraj maharaj said that this was not my nature so much but then if but prabhupa trusted him prabhupa wanted him then we do the service as a necessary as a as a duty and then uh, so so simplicity we talked about we could say simplicity in terms of the service we are doing or simplicity in terms of the heart so devotees heart is always very simple hmm? in terms of they just want to please krishna and in that sense the external expression would be simply do whatever is required to please krishna and if if like you like you give the example you go so i answer or complicated questions of very philosophers so the philosophical presentation might be quite intricate and complicated but the purpose is simple and then we discussed the example of ramanand rai and uh, so raghunath das goswami because they had the background so they could they could do particular services for the lord which others could not do and they did that well so then we discuss about sincerity sincerity and simplicity in this context are more or less similar and then a devotee when they are, they are externally not simple so one is so i think one is simplicity of the heart second is simplicity com- when they are doing complex services then at that time it's not so much lacking simplicity as you could say exhibiting reciprocity like krishna if somebody is duplicitous then they'll deal with them appropriately so like vasudev dealt with kamsa and so that is basically like shatho shatam chanakya pandit also says and uh, that is not lacking in simplicity but that is making sure that the service of krishna is done and if somebody is naive then then also krishna might guide them from within something is fishy over here because of their sincerity <coughs> <coughs> or sometimes someone might be misled we discussed giriraj maharaj and tamal krishna maharaj and others <coughs> he also mentioned the problem that sometimes some people may be over smart and then we discuss about simplicity and ability if both are there services work best and so when a devotee gives up simplicity externally for diplomacy that has to be done very carefully so great so only when somebody is a great soul and a particular great cause that's when it's best and then we talk about accommodating devotees who are simple and accommodate devotee of different nature <coughs> <coughs> so you said it requires strong inspiring and sustained leadership to be able to actually do that constantly things keep going down so in devotee care one of the reasons why devotees may feel uncared for and may leave is because they don't find a space for themselves and then we talk about three things now things we like to do 
they inspire us things we need to things we have to do they purify us and things we are asked to do or they express our gratitude so that things we are asked to do if they are against our nature then that should be an emergency it shouldn't be like a constant thing we have to do then there's this idea of rights and duties that if everybody is claiming their rights that makes a distasteful atmosphere but if everybody is doing doing their duties then the right others rights are automatically taken care of and before that i think you also mentioned about the question that um, you mentioned adikesha prabhu asked maharaj that question and then in answer he explained how there is essentially the principle that <coughs> if some devotee who is doing complex services that book distributor sometimes went away if they start they don't remember that this all this diplomacy is for a particular service and that diplomacy becomes their default nature then that can alienate from them from the devotee community that can cause loss of faith and that may even contribute to their going away from krishna so it's like diplomacy is a, is a tool it has to be carefully used you could almost say it's like yukta vairagya which we use for krishna service and then you give this beautiful example of a garland for now should devotees try to consciously develop humility or simplicity here so he said that yes or a virtues like that in general so the virtues are like a gar- a flowers and the devotion like the thread so both come together then it's a sweet or proper offering and then we in talk about concludingly that diplomacy uh, how do we avoid duplicity while being diplomatic so you said that ultimately it's like the pandavas they are pleasing krishna so if pleasing krishna is the purpose then it's never it's never duplicity even if others may think like that and ultimate the ultimate definition of simplicity is simply do whatever it whatever is required for pleasing krishna and serving krishna thank you bro anything you have to add i was reminded of a talk uh, by uh, radhana swami maharaj <clears throat> way back in 93 or something uh, he was saying about simple living high thinking mm. so uh, though of course we are discussing more of the internal attitude mm. but in terms of external living also he made a very nice uh, statement he said <clears throat> use what you have <clears throat> and have what you need you and if you need more do what you know just get what you need <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually it's an illusion to think that the more you have the less you need it's a fact the fact is the more you have the more you need so you know being satisfied with whatever the lord has supplied but never being satisfied with how much more we could serve krishna serve devotees serve the mission i think that focus these are the simple formulas <laughs> of of being very happy and you know blissful in krishna consciousness <laughs> this is memorable ending bro i'll just repeat it so you said that use what you have and have what you need and yeah. if you have to do more then get what you need yeah if you need more if you need, get when when the need is there whatever okay <laughs> otherwise if you just keep getting more that's true that if the more you have then the need doesn't decrease in fact the need increases that's profound so i recently read and eventually that. and then he made a statement all you need is the holy name <laughs> oh that's all that you need ultimately is the holy name are naam eva kevalam kevalam yes <laughs> yeah, i recently read somewhere that without raising consciousness the problems of pros- poverty are not removed they are simply replaced by the problems of prosperity <laughs> so <laughs> something similar i didn't hear without raising consciousness the problems of pros- pro- poverty can't be removed they will simply be replaced by the problems of po- prosperity <laughs> <laughs> so some of the problems will come up yes ho ye The so proof of is. that is Kolavich Shridhar. <laughs> yeah. Now all that he had was the holy name, and nothing else was needed. 
Yeah, I want to Chaitanya Bhagwan say that his his pot was something that even the most frustrated thief would not steal. <laughs> so <laughs> the scriptures are also quite, you could say, Graphic. vivid in describing some points. <laughs> 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 yes, I think this is a very, a very a tangible carry home point to the memorable message. Thank you very much for your association today, Rohi. It's I hope that I can become a little less complicated in my mind and heart, and imbibe some simplicity. Thank Prabhu, you. Prabhu, you are simply great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hope I can come out of that illusion one day. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Devat. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.